Hi everyone, this is Richard from MTG Goldfish, and today I have another budget deck for you guys. Uh, I had a lot of requests for a control deck in Modern, and uh, lucky enough, there is a 100 ticket control deck in Mono Blue Tron. Uh, it's a very fun deck, it's a control deck, you get to play very powerful cards, and there's a fun combo finish. Uh, it costs 100 tickets online, and about $260 in real life. So both very affordable for the modern format. So let's take a look at the cards in the deck. So first we have the three Urza lands. We have Urza's Mine, Urza's Power Plant, and Urza's Tower. So when you have all three of these lands on the battlefield, you get to generate seven mana as early as turn three. So we use the seven mana to power out big threats and to combo off. So the main way of winning with this deck is to Mindslaver lock the opponent. Mindslaver is a 6 mana artifact and you can pay 4 mana and sacrifice it to take the opponent's next turn. So you get to play your opponent's next turn, you get to cast their spells, you get to tap their lands and do everything they would and obviously you'll do this in a way that uh, hurts them the most or helps you win the game. So in addition to Mindslaver we run Academy Runes which allows you to put an artifact card back from your graveyard to the top of your library. So combine this with Mind Slaver, you can take all of your opponent's turns. So if you have 12 mana and Academy Ruins and Mind Slaver, you can take all of your opponent's turns and you can either deck them like that or you can use their cards to kill them. Now, this combo is a bit awkward to play in Magic Online. You actually have to go through the motions of taking their turn and uh, reoccurring Mind Slaver. And it actually takes a very long time with all the clicking necessary. So you'll see in my matches that I struggle with this a bit and oftentimes I'll go to time in my, in my matches. So in Magic Online it's a bit awkward, playing any kind of combo deck with an infinite loop is hard, but in real life uh, this combo is awesome. So in addition to the combo we also run some finishers. We have Worm Coil Engine, Sundering Titan, and Platinum Angel. So these are important because sometimes you may lose your Mind Slaver, your opponent can for example, clear your graveyard, or they can just uh, remove your Mind Slayers from the game. So Worm Coil Engine is a 6-6 Death Touch lifelink, and when it dies, it leaves two 3-3s three behind. So it's very hard to deal with. Uh, it helps you against the burn matchup, and it helps you gain some life. Uh, Sundering Titan is a 7-10 body, and you can destroy a basic land of each type when it comes into play. So this is great against decks with multiple colors. So three color decks, you can sometimes do a one-sided Armageddon on them. Platinum Angel is just a 4-4 flyer, and your opponent needs to deal with it in order to win the game. So this is good against, say, Splinter Twin. You can slap it down, and they need to remove it, otherwise their combo doesn't do anything. Uh, so these are the other finishers we can use in addition to the Mind Slaver lock. And all of these rely on powering out uh, a lot of mana with the Urzatron lands. So the rest of the deck comprises mostly of counter spells, ramp, and card draw and card selection. Um, so, you know, the, the deck is heavily reliant on getting the Urzatron lands online. So we have a lot of tutors and card search. So Expedition Map is a tutor for lands. So very often you'll use it to complete your Tron. Uh, you can also use it to fetch Academy Runes to finish off the combo. Or sometimes you might even fetch an island to fix your colors or even a tectonic edge to uh, break up your opponent's game plan. Uh, Solemn Similicrum is another great card here. He's a 2-2 body, he blocks, he gets you blue mana. Very often you'll just have colorless lands, so Solemn's ability to fetch a basic island is very important. And he also cycles when he dies, so you can use him to chump block and draw a card and hopefully uh, draw into your combo. Talisman of Dominance is just another ramp card. Uh, it provides you access to blue mana. So once again, since we run so many colorless lands, uh, being constrained on blue mana is an actual problem. So Talisman helps you solve that. And it also provides you black mana, which we'll use for Dismember, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, our two counter spells are Condescend and Remand. So both of these cards keep you in the game by countering what your opponent's doing and helps you progress your game with card selection or card draw. So Condescend helps you with a scry 2, and that will help you draw into your combo, and same with Reman, the extra card will help you towards your combo. Uh, Condescend also becomes a hard counter once you have 
uh, your Tron lands online, you can condescend for 10 or some ridiculous number, and your opponent most likely won't be able to pay for it. Uh, in terms of tutors or uh, card selection, we have Thirst for Knowledge. This is probably one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, you have a lot of artifacts, so most of the time it's just draw three, discard one. Uh, it's also instant speed, uh, which makes it uh, very useful. We have Fabricate, a three mana tutor for artifacts. So oftentimes you'll use this to fetch up your Mind Slaver or sometimes even Worm Coil Engine. And along the same lines, we have a Treasure Mage, a 3 to cast 2-2, and when it comes into the battlefield, you can tutor for an artifact 6 or greater. So again, you're probably going to tutor for Worm Coil or Mind Slaver. And now we have some interaction cards. So we have Dismember as a 2 of to help remove creatures. Uh, so most likely, you're trying to kill Deceiver Exarchs or Splinter Twins. Uh, you don't really want to be killing Goblin Guide with this, because if you're paying 4 life, you're probably going to lose anyway. Uh, you also have Oblivion Stone, a general purpose sweeper. So, we only have these 3 pieces of removal, so it's very important that uh, you ration it appropriately. And uh, we also have 2 more cards to deal with other permanents. So we have Repeal. Uh, Repeal is blue X, return target non-land permanent with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. Uh, so this is useful for, say, Blood Moons or uh, Splinter Twin combo, so you can return Deceiver Exarch in response to Splinter Twin. And it also draws you a card. So again, uh, it keeps control long enough and helps you draw a card to hit your combo. Uh, Cyclonic Rift is another great card. It's a 2-mana bounce spell, but you can overload it for 7. So if you have Tron, you can return your opponent's uh, board to their hand. So for example, they could Splinter Twin combo off, attack you for 20, and then you just overload a Cyclonic Rift. Uh, we have a 1 of Snapcaster Mage. So Snapcaster Mage kind of gives you one more of any useful spell. So you could use him to get a removal spell. You can use him to flash back uh, a Thirst for Knowledge. And finally, we have 1 Spell Burst. So this is kind of a finisher. It's a a blue X counter target spell with converted mana cost X with buyback 3. So if you have Tron online, you can probably spell burst uh, at least once every turn. So you can kind of soft lock your opponent like this. Uh, and in a pinch, you can also just use it as a worse version of Condescend. You can uh, pay 4 and spell burst a Exarch. And finally, we have our lands. Uh, so we have 8 Islands, we have 1 Tech Edge, and 1 Oboro Palace in the Clouds. So Oboro Palace in the Clouds is used to protect yourself against Tech Edge. Uh, if, if you need blue mana, you can use it and then return it to your hand and keep yourself under 4 lands to avoid being Tech Edge. So moving on to our sideboard here, uh, we have 6 cards. We have Crucible of the Worlds as a 1 of. So this helps against decks that are heavy on land destruction. Very often people will try to destroy your Tron, so Crucible allows you to uh, replay the Tron land from the graveyard. You can also kind of soft lock someone with Tech Edge and Crucible of the Worlds. You can Tech Edge them every turn and keep them only on 3 mana. We have two Aetherizes uh, as a defense against uh, creatures. And this is actually very useful uh, against Splinter Twin. You can let them combo off and when they attack you, you just Aetherize and reset the board. Uh, you can also try it against other decks like Affinity if you live long enough. Um, but it's a very general purpose card here. And then we have uh, some more counter spells. We have two Spell Pierce, we have three Spell Snare uh, for decks that play a lot of spells. And we also have three Relic of Pedretidus. This is for uh, combating graveyard strategies. And we also have four cards devoted to Burn in Dragon's Claw. So Burn is a very tough matchup. A lot of our cards don't interact with them, and they can kill us before we can combo off. So Dragon's Claw helps us gain life uh, to stabilize the board and live long enough to combo off. So once again, this is the deck. It's about a hundred tickets in Magic Online and two hundred and sixty tickets, or sorry, two hundred sixty dollars in real life. Uh, if you want to purchase this deck on Magic Online, I recommend you check out our sponsor, Card Hoarder. Uh, they're sponsoring this video and lent the deck to help me test. And you can also purchase it from TCG Player if you want the physical cards in real life. Uh, on the right here, there will be links 
to view the gameplay videos uh, so you can watch the matchups against Splinter Twin and also Red Green Tron. So I hope you found this video useful. If you want to see a, another budget deck in Standard or Legacy or even Popper, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll choose that next time. Thanks guys!